Welcome back, everyone, to Onboard Tangroa. After having a fabulous time exploring Galliano Island, it was time to buckle down and get back to work. We had guests coming on board this summer, and, well, let's just say there's a lot of stuff to do on Onboard Tangroa before we can actually take guests on board. Though the guests really are Blaine's parents and our best friends. But stay tuned. It's boat work time. Have you ever wanted to just change your life? We did. We're the Carmina family and we felt we were wasting our lives and we desperately needed a change. So we bought and moved on to an old 1969 aluminum trawler that needed a complete refit. Join us as we refit Tangrera while exploring the world around us one island at a time. So I find one of the hardest things when I'm taking on projects like this where I'm building from scratch is um, just the amount of time that it takes to, I guess, engineer, design, uh, how it's going to be. Uh, I don't like having to do things twice, um, so I try to think of everything uh, before I do it. It just takes a really long time to figure that out before you actually pull the trigger and start, ha uh, start doing. So I sit a lot and I stare at stuff a lot, and unfortunately that's just one of the necessities for doing something like this is, uh, is just getting creative and trying to figure out how to best use the space and making sure that you don't shoot yourself in the foot in the future um, when you're building something in, um, you know, like access, things like that. Uh, make sure that you have all of that. So yeah, things just take a really long time. And uh, that's one of the unfortunate things about this. All right, so I got to take some uh, portholes off today. And uh, they've been on for a little while, you guys here. So the way these work is uh, there's a set screw there and then there's a, a screw, pin screw that I have to take off there. And uh, they've been in for a long time. So I'm going to attempt to get these guys out of here. Um, I don't necessarily see this going great, but eh, we'll give it a go anyway. Your good old college try. See how we make out. And since the college try failed, it was back to installing fuel senders. Next up, I have to install this adapter ring because these senders are actually a BSP fitting and they've got an O-ring seal on them. So this adapts it over to the SAE flange, which the holes are already there from the original senders. So um, just using tap gel, of course, because I've got stainless steel screws going into aluminum. So I'll get that on and then I'll show you guys put the sensor in. Alright, so here's the really complicated and difficult part. And that's the second tank sender installed. So now I've got one, two. They're both working, and that is somewhat accurate. I still have to calibrate the, calibrate the full on the mid fresh water, and uh, the front fresh water, I've got to calibrate both the top and the bottom. So we'll uh, hopefully have that done in the next couple of days. So sitting here working on the tank level cinders, I went ahead and uh, tapped out the the tank a little bigger uh, so I could put the water maker feed in. So now I've got both tank one and tank two being used on the water maker. So we are fully functional. I can fill the front tank as well directly from the water maker. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Yay, knocking out the projects this weekend. So one thing on this uh, head that I have to work with is we're widening out the shower. Um, so you can see the existing uh, tabs here that um, the railings were attached to. The tub went up against this wall. Um, so we're making a shower uh, and I've uh, to make my threshold I've got to get rid of these tabs. Well, I was going to cut them off and then when I got to closer looking I realized that they were only welded on one side. 
which makes things a lot easier. This one I've already broken loose, but um, basically I just took my hammer and ow. Uh, I've decided I'm gonna leave these three tabs because um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep them out and I'll build a seat in along this edge here. Uh, so that way I don't have to get crazy and, and cut all those loose because that is what actually supports the, the bottom edge of this wall. Um, so I'll, I'll put a, a rail back in there and then I'll keep, uh, I'll keep that all as is and then I don't have to worry about re-welding tabs on the, the tank close to the wall. Uh, as you guys know, I have a business that I do fabrication work in as well. Um, and what I've learned over the years for fabrication, especially aluminum, is, uh, as with anything, right tool for the right job. So, here we go. I've got my grinder out. I'm um, going to start grinding these welds. And um, this is not the right tool for the job. This is the right tool for the job. A gouging wheel that's specifically designed for removing aluminum rapidly. Um, you could sit here and make an immense amount of dust with this guy, or you could use one of these guys and uh, get the job done a lot faster. One more important note that I will add, uh, I'm not sure how many of you out there use grinders. Um, this is a, a very important safety tip. Make sure that grinder that your grinder is off. Uh, these guys, as you can see, I've got nothing plugged in. Uh, these guys are made to snap and lock into the on position. Um, if that had gotten bumped on or somebody forgot to turn it off um, last time and had just unplugged it, uh, if that were sitting like meow and you were to plug that in, um, this is going to go somewhere really fast and um, there, there is no place that is good for that to go really fast. Alright, there you have it. Welds removed. And the nice thing about uh, this blade as well is it doesn't induce any heat into the metal, at least not, not substantial. So I just did this one and it's still cold. No one was hurt in the making of this video. Now, while Blaine was downstairs working on the master head, I was upstairs in my element working on the teak. Two years ago, we had Krista's wedding on the boat and we did the rails. Well, now that I'm missing half my rails and they're all getting redone, I figure I'm going to take the CTOL, which I have to say I wasn't too impressed with CTOL. Um, I guess I should have put some epiphanes over top of the CTOL, but I'm taking everything off the cap rails in the bow and I'm just going to leave it for the summer and then I'll figure out what to do after the summer once the other rails go on and then I have a complete set of teak rails. But let me show you. So this is it with it off and then I'm just taking all this seat all off right now. So I only have to go to there, both sides, and um, yeah, let's do this. We've got one side, oh, he got Teak dust makes me sneeze every time. Anyways, I've got one side done with 60 grit, except for in the areas where I'm gonna need the fine tool. So yeah, quite happy. I use the fine tool in around the stanchions. And uh, yeah, okay. Now, another side. So I did it, everything's done in 40 grit and I just washed it to let all the feathers come up. You may be like feathers, what's that? Um, it's the little fe wood feathers, I guess you call it. So when you do 40 grit, you sand it um, and then you wet it all and the little feathers come up and then I hit it with 120 grit. I'm not doing 120 grit today though. Um, I'm kind of done. So you might ask why I'm going through so much effort to, to keep everything separated on the, the deck here. Um, the, I believe if I'm not mistaken that um, uh, Tangaroa was haul number three from Stephen Brothers out of aluminum. Um, so the third boat they built out of aluminum. And they were obviously 
still learning. Um, this was this was obviously quite a while ago. Um, aluminum wasn't um, super popular at the time for building, I guess, and uh, they just didn't really have the history of building uh, with aluminum to know what to avoid. Uh, so you look at all these these wood edges, they're all butted right down tight against the floor, uh, which is all well and good. It's, you know, if, if you're building wood boats, that's, that's good. Keep everything tight, um, I guess, anyway. However, with aluminum, things change a little bit, um, especially plywood like this on end grain uh, on, the, on top of the tank or on top of whatever. Uh, you get any kind of moisture in there and it wicks up the edge of the, the wood. And you can see, you know, like back in this corner back here where you've got some, some moisture there um, or have in the past. Um, so what happens is, is it wicks up into that wood and then it stays damp on that edge of the aluminum all the time. Uh, and what happens is, as we all have no, or at least you should if you've been watching our show for a while, um, is that that uh, will start to corrode the aluminum uh, fairly heavily, uh, if, if not kept in check. So what I'm doing is just keeping that separation there. So when we lay something down on top of this, this aluminum, it gives the, um, gives the aluminum uh, area to breathe and moisture to, to dissipate. At least that's the plan anyway so hopefully that works out well and this will increase the lifespan of the, the aluminum here by leaps and bounds and here I've started to um, lay out the countertop in here so I'm just basically going to follow what was here before it's just this wall here will be shifted more this way to make a little bit more shower room because we don't need that much countertop space so, yeah, did more headway. For never having built a cabinet before, I have to say I'm very proud of Blaine and what he's accomplishing. And it's important to us after work day to just sit and enjoy the sunset. Hey, at least I'm breathing. So is it your last day of school? Huh? Are you happy? <laughs> so valuable life lesson <laughs> when using a buffer Don't wear loose clothing. Let me show you just what happened. It's actually still stuck to me It kind of hit my stomach and yeah, I know I have a big stomach right now Sorry But I'm actually stuck to the buffer with my shirt and it freaking did my hand in. <sighs> How much I hate buffers. I seriously have scars all over my legs from buffers. I just shouldn't be using them. But I don't really know what to do with this one because I'm really stuck. Like, look at, like, I'm like. <sighs> like, what? <sighs> like, how did it go? Like, I don't even know what happened and Blaine's not here because he's at the shop welding I don't think I have any blood which is good but I'm just stuck on a buffer and after the buffer incident I decided it was time to take a break Nope. Ah. Woo! Then it was time for the Brentwood Bay Annual Sailing Regatta. Blaine was a start line and I was actually racing this year. I was looking forward to a nice, fast race. But instead, I got this. Okay. Wondering too. Huh? 
Come on, Blaine. Hit the horn. <laughs> yeah. I think your car is too forward. Can you see the one on the opposite side, the shadow of it, or no? The race was called in favor of a raft up. So, I'm right by your house. Oh, yeah. Fresh, fresh, yeah. Fresh, yeah. Fresh, yeah. Put a little. Woo! And after the raft up, Izzy and I decided to go for a swim. Why? Because the water's so gross? A little bit scuffy. Every spring, this is what happens to the water. It's like a massive algae. <laughs> and he said there's a bee in my Sorry, hair. There is. I don't want to tell you. Well, <laughs> where is it? I can't even see it in the camera. Get out of my hair. Oh. It's right there. Get it out of my hair. Just no. flick it. No, I'm not flicking it. Well, Izzy. Is there a bee in my hair? Yes! Where? It's right there! Oh, flick it! No! Flick it! No. I may eat Do it. I have to flick it? Are you ready? It's still there, Mom. Ah. <laughs> it's still there! <laughs> it's right on the bottom. Get no. it! Is it dead? No, it was moving in your hair. Is it gone? I think so. Oh, land! <laughs> we sit here trying to flick a blee out of my hair. I'm about to drive the tender onto land. Nice, helpful kid, eh? <laughs> I'm not flicking your bee. Get my bee! No, I'm not getting the bee out of your hair. Get your bee out yourself. <laughs> oh, I found my husband. I was looking for him. What are you doing? Uh, I'm just cleaning up the bottom sides of the metal here so I can weld. Oh my gosh. And I gotta, did you have a look up on the top how many more holes there are now? I don't know if I want to. Because <laughs> okay. I found more. Oh my gosh. Lane's making holes. It's a lot of holes. But you want to know why we have an aluminum boat? Because my hobby knows how to weld. <laughs> but he makes the holes bigger first. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. It's a lot of holes. Yeah, aluminum's kind of funny. Well, stainless does it too, but you get what's called intergranular corrosion. So you'll see like a little pit like this but it'll go through and like it'll weave its way in between the top and bottom surfaces of the aluminum so like here this is one spot i just kind of tapped with my hammer and it went right through because it's it just worked its way right through so now i'm just kind of doing a little bit of dentistry and uh <laughs> exploring all the the spots just to make sure that it's uh there's no other spots that are all the way through that I need to fix. Blaine says he has cut more holes in the rail. Oh geez, Blaine. Some big holes. Bigger holes. Less holes, bigger holes. That used to be four holes there. Now it's one big hole. Nice job. Now you have to fix it. It's time consuming, very. It is. Today's been a busy day. We've done grinding, we've prepped up for welding, but the wind was too bit too much, so we can't weld. When the wind is, um... Blaine, what does it mean when the wind's too windy? It blows the shielding glass away from the weld. Does it sound like I know what I'm talking about? I have no clue. Shielding gas. What? 
shielding gas away, shielding from, gas away from the weld, what? Puddle. Puddle. Anyways, that's what happened today because it's way too windy. However, the wind is starting to die. It is, oh God, 6.30. Um, it's Canada Day. We've had a few ciders. It's okay though. Just, we're not, yeah. Anyways, um, I think I'm going to have our leftover wings for dinner and then we're going to do some welding, right B? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. So Blaine wants me I stood on top of that up there. That jug oh. there. And in case you're wondering why Blaine needed me up here, well I had the important job of holding the backing plate up to the bottom of where Blaine was gonna weld. So Blaine had something to weld onto. Okay, I give you plate. So there's a shiny side and a dull side. Holy crap! Hips are almost too big for this. But we did it. Okay. Okay, you got a shiny. I don't think my shoulder's supposed to bend this way. My 50 year old shoulder, let's clarify that. But yeah. But really, I don't really need my shoulder to work tonight. This is kind of hurting a little bit, but we're not going to tell him because then he'll feel guilty. And it's never good to make your husband feel guilty unless you need something. Hmm. I don't really need anything right now, though, but yeah. Ready? Yeah, go. Ready? Yeah, go! Okay, so we're gonna try something new. We've got the backings on there, but now we're going to use a copper backing because supposedly the aluminum won't stick to the copper. But this copper backing is going to get really, really hot as I'm pulling up there, so I'm just making Blaine get me a little thing of water so when I release it, it can drop into water. So don't you think that's a good idea? Okay. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out if I scream and I'm hot, really hot. Okay, in this hand. Sure. I'll figure it out right now. It's called fake it till you make it. Okay. Now what? Well, it's going to get easier. Really? But it's going to get slightly harder before it gets easier. I'll, um, I'll try to get something here for you to That's step on. on. Is it? Oh. I was videoing. Hi. Um, okay. But I can't help you and film at the same time. hold on to these? Uh, ish. Okay, you're on the, on the engine. Okay, step down with your right. Okay, gently. Okay, That's fire extinguisher. Let go of me. So okay. And with that, we decided to call it a night. It was time to get some much-deserved sleep.